another video with me 320 sim pilot where we're going to fly this airbus a321 around in the visual circuit in edinburgh which is where we're starting and we'll practice the visual circuit with approaches landings and touch and goes so we're going to land and then accelerate and take off again all in one go without coming to a stop this is something that you will do when you start flying the airliner for the first time as a new pilot it's great fun it's something everybody remembers and you basically go and fly these circuits and do a certain number of takeoffs and landings in order to then be qualified to go and fly it with passengers for the first time it's not always required it depends on which country and which uh, aviation authority you're using but it's uh, an amazing experience everybody absolutely loves it and it's usually the first time you've had your hands on the real airliner we're going to start here in edinburgh runway 24 and we'll fly the visual circuit i'm going to show you how to set it up and then we'll get underway. As always, this is not for any real world use, it's just to show you some generic ideas about how we might do this in an Airbus in X-Plane, uh, and it's not reflecting any real world procedures or airline procedures either. So let's get started. Here we are in the flight deck and I have it pretty much set up. So a few things we'll need to do first is have the MCDU set up for this flight. If we follow our normal routine, we have uh, a video out on that if you need help setting up the MCDU, but this is quite a basic setup. So we'll go to the init A page and I put in a route Echo Golf Papa Hotel to Echo Golf Papa Hotel, Edinburgh to Edinburgh. Uh, any call sign, cost an X, I've just put in 3000 feet, we won't reach the cruise anyway. Uh, and that's the init A page. So it's going to be from the airport you're starting at to the airport it, you're starting at again. <laughs> then flight plan page, I put in a departure, simply runway 24, which is where I'm going to do my circuits from. There's a wind is straight down the runway here at 24 and it's a really good idea to set up the wind just a simple headwind for this just to make it easier you can add crosswinds but i'll talk about that a bit later and then i have no sit you do not need a sit for this and then that's inserted and you'll see it gives us a straight line out to 1630 feet uh, which is uh, obviously 1500 feet above the runway it's about 130 feet elevation then at the other end i put in an arrival simply runway 24 so not the ILS not the NDB just runway 24 no vias no stars insert now if you look through your flight plan you should have uh, it's probably because I've done it twice I don't need that point it can just be straight ahead 16 30 feet and then the CF uh, and then the runway 24 so a really simple flight plan while we're in the flight plan page, it'd be useful to go to fix info. So on flight plan, select uh, the top left key, then the top right key, fix info, and put in the threshold of the runway you're landing on. So Echo Golf Papa Hotel, runway 24. And what I've done is I've put in a radial, which we can see here, of 151. So I'm sitting in the left-hand seat. I'm going to fly this visual circuit to the left. So I'm going to take off and then fly left, downwind, and then left again and land. Uh, and I'll just keep doing that. So I want to know when I'm a beam at this threshold, so I want to know when I'm passing it, and you'll see why later on, but we're going to time from there. So I've put in that line to make it easier in the simulator. In real life, you can just look out the window, but it does also help to have this line. It gives you an accurate idea of when you're passing. So the inbound course of this runway is 241, so I just took 90 degrees off that, uh, which gives us 151 and puts us there. So that's what we've got in the fixed info page. Secondary is just a copy, RadNav, uh, it's got the ILS tuned. The real airplane probably wouldn't tune that, I haven't selected it as an approach. But as a result, in the tow list, the way it does it, uh, and I wouldn't expect this to happen, like I say, um, I'm actually going to turn off the GS mode, the glide slope mode, otherwise it will give me warnings um, when I'm flying around, which, again, in the real airplane you wouldn't need to do, um, it shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, so that is our DIFS, RadNav, and uh, init. B page well that's not here I've got engines running already so if you've already got your engines running yeah, just put in whatever loadout you you require I've got it set to a reasonably lightweight 59 tons ish I've given us 10 tons of fuel you'd probably have a fair bit of fuel on but no passengers so that's why it's so light and that's it really simple then in the FCU uh, I've put in 1600 feet for the circuit managed speed obviously which is going to come from our performance page again uh, I've got a video on how to set this up but uh, you're just going to need to go to loading, loading in Perth, have those set, and then I obviously put in these numbers from here. Uh, 1600 feet, standard uh, Q&H 1013 today is, is just what the Q&H is here in Edinburgh, and I'm going to do a flat one takeoff for my first takeoff. So it's all looking pretty reasonable. What we're going to do is we're going to take off just like normal, 
using the takeoff technique uh, again I have another video for that as well if you need help doing your normal takeoffs and then we're going to climb straight ahead I'm going to level off at 1600 feet which will happen quite quickly as soon as I'm at 1600 feet I'm going to pull the speed so I'm going to fly at S speed then I'm going to activate the approach phase and take off the flight directors and turn on the bird fly downwind and uh, then once I'm at beam the threshold I'm going to start my timer I'm going to time for 45 seconds roughly because I'm 1500 feet above the ground but I have to adjust that for wind so if I have a 10 knot tailwind I'll reduce that from 45 to 35 seconds if it was a 15 knot tailwind I'd reduce it from 45 to 30 seconds so I'm going to fly downwind once I reach the end of that time so once I reach the end of my uh, whatever time I've decided based on the wind I'm going to put out flap 2 gear down start my turn I'm going to stay level and then once I reach about 160 knots in the deceleration I'm going to start a, a gradual descent 500 feet per minute maybe flap 3 flap 4 and turn around onto final and land so it sounds like quite a lot of things to do but I'll talk about them once we're going and I'll talk about the touch and go once we're on final approach so here we go Fifty percent M1, release the tow brakes. There's our man flex forty one SRS runway auto thrust his arms. We have the BSS sound pack, which will hopefully some nice sound effects for you. Passing eighty knots can release the side stick to neutral. Looking out to the end to keep it straight. There's our rotate. Three degrees a second. Positive climb, gear up. And there's the map. Now it's interesting we're getting that uh, too low terrain warning. Don't don't get that in the real aircraft. They, they would have the settings or databases to make sure that the airports worked properly. But here we go. Already to a thousand feet, so that's the thrust levers back to the climb gate, which gives us speed mode, and now I'm leveling up at 1600 feet. Now I know I want to be flying at S speed now, so I'm going to pull the speed and just set that to S for now. And then we level off at 1600. So here we are then. I'm going to now take off the flight directors, both flight directors off, bird on. I'm going to set that track to all the way downwind, so the opposite of the runway landing. So 241 and it's 061. And now I'm going to activate the approach phase, which it looks like it is. So I can manage the speed and it should fly at S speed. Great. Now, at 600 feet, I'm simply going to turn downwind onto 061 with a left-hand turn. As I said, I'm doing a left-hand circuit. I'm going to go to about 25 degrees angle of bank for this turn. As you can see, now the airplane is just keeping us at S speed in speed mode, which is great. I'm not going to select any auto brake for landing. I want the airplane to uh, not uh, apply any brakes, and I'm not going to apply any brakes or reverses. If I accidentally reply, apply the reverse thrust, I must stop on the runway or land like normal. You cannot go around or do a touch and go if you put out the reverses. So keeping about 25 degrees of bank, I'm looking to turn downwind onto 061 and I've set a track of 061. So I just need to make sure my bird is the tail fin is on 061 and that way our track will be correct even if there's a crosswind. I can also see that here, this green line is my track, whereas the yellow is my heading. So not much of a difference today because I've set it a nice simple headwind, which will be a tailwind when we're downwind. Right, starting to reach our heading, it's that little blue line on the PFD, which is hard to see, and in the real aircraft it's much bigger than that, but there we go. And roll out with the bird on that, and we'll be 061, we've climbed a little bit so we'll get ourselves back to 1600 feet. And I can see here my green line is lined up tracking that blue. So that's what you need to do. You need to track downwind at, at the right track, not heading, because you've got to account for the wind. So now uh, I'm going to get ready for my touch and go. So thinking it through, I'm going to land. As soon as we touch down, I'm going to do a normal rollout, but I'm not going to select reverse or brakes. And then what I'm going to do is set the thrust levers forward a little bit so we don't go into ground idle. That will also put the spoilers down. Then I'm going to bring the flaps to 2, because they'll be at full for the landing. And once they're at uh, 2, and I'm happy, I'm going to set toga and then rotate at V approach, which I'll show you what I mean. 
some things like that are not realistic because in the real airplane you'd have two pilots who can also disarm spoilers and things like that we can't do that today so this is just what seems to work in the TOLIS so here we go then as I said we can see the airport out there the threshold is just there so we're passing it now and we're passing my blue line start the timer I said 45 seconds because I'm 1500 feet above the runway with a 10 knot tailwind that means I need to reduce the time so I'm going to set it to 35 seconds at which point I'm going to put out flap 2 gear down start my turn once the speed has sort of decayed a bit by about 20 knots then I'll start a descent and hopefully once we are around the turn I'll start to see the runway when I'm visual with the runway I can put out flap 3 and flap 4 I want to have those out and be fully configured by a thousand feet so I'll keep the PFD up Three, four, five. there's 35 seconds starting the turn flaps 2 gear down and because we're in managed speed the Airbus naturally does it I'm going to use 20 degrees of bank for the start of this turn because this turn is slower we don't need 25 degrees of bank otherwise we'll just be uh, tighter in obviously that depends on what sort of wind you're looking at so keeping it level keeping it level there's about 20 knots slow so 160 let's put the nose down aiming for 500 feet per minute initially maybe 700 don't want to go too fast down otherwise we'll be low and in real life you'd be looking out the window uh, sadly in the simulator we can't quite see it it is a little bit more obvious but the speed's reducing and we are pretty much set up for our landing spoilers are still armed from the takeoff uh, but as I said in real life that wouldn't quite be like that so keeping it in the turn now I can see that I'm probably going to roll out uh, slightly short so I'm just shallowing off the turn, shallowing off my descent. I can see the runway flaps to 3 and flaps to full. There's the runway. Definitely need to head a bit to the right. So we're now fully configured at 1000 feet roughly on the profile. I can see that I'm about 3 miles from the runway at 1000 feet above it so that's about right. Keeping that 3 degrees from here then. using Orbex uh, Scotland or Northern Northern England and Scotland here I think I can see two whites two reds on the pappies and I'll just keep moving over towards that center line probably getting a little bit low there's three reds so we'll just shallow off ground speed is 120 knots so to fly three degrees at 120 knots I need to do 600 feet per minute so once I see two whites two reds I need the vertical speed to be 600 easy on the Airbus because we can just put the bird like it is here with the bottom sitting on five uh, which should give us roughly three degrees okay so lining up on final and what we're going to do here as we've talked about is no reverses no brakes we're going to touch down once the nose wheel is down I'm going to move the thrust levers forward a little bit just to disarm the spoilers and to stop them from going into ground idle then I'm going to move the flaps to two once the flaps are at two if everything's working set toga and rotate at the magenta bug on the speed tape so here we go coming down onto final approach normal landing technique I have a tutorial on landing techniques uh, which you can view it will give you a clear idea of what we're doing here thrust levers to idle holding it there holding it there ok there's the touchdown ok moving the thrust levers up just to get the engine spooled up that brings the spoilers down so I've got about 50% of one flaps lever, lever to two so flaps are now travelling which you can see down there and there they are let's go toga so man toga SRS go around track and rotate positive climb gear up and away we go and now we can do exactly the same thing So, already we're getting into Outstar. 
So Thrusty was back to climb. Outstar. Leveling off at 1600 feet. Which is coming up now. No need for the autopilot for this. Flaps to one. Must remember to bring them in on this one. Pull the speed to keep S speed. Make sure we do actually level off at 600 feet. Right, flight director's off again. We've got the bird. Going to set that back to track. Set 061. Activate the approach phase in here, which is now active. Manage speed. And time to turn down wind again. So 25 degrees, because we're going faster on this one. We're doing this turn at about 185 knots, whereas the turn onto final, we're only you know, 160 and slower. So that's why we have to do this one with slightly more bank angle. And we're just going to do the same thing again. The important bits here are that we must move those thrust levers far enough forwards on landing to make sure we get the spoilers down and the engine spooling up. In the real airplane, you'd have somebody else do the spoilers for you, um, but we just can't do that here. It'd be too complicated on the ground to do that all at once. Uh, so that's why we're doing that. Also, of course, you'd check your landing performance. You can't do this in a really short runway. It takes a bit of tarmac, um, and I'd say Edinburgh is probably pretty close to uh, the limits of, of making it work. So here we go, 25 degrees, heading round onto final now. This time we're a bit closer in. You can see on here it gives us the distance. So I'm 2.3 miles left of the centre line, which will probably work out just fine. And as ever, we're tracking. I'll just show you what would happen if we had a crosswind. So if I customise the weather, take that wind, I'm going to make it more across a 310 at 10. So in this case, it's the same principle. I need to track 061. So the bird is showing my track. I just move it so that the tail of the bird is on that blue line. Now it's hard on the PFD in the TOLIS, as we've said. So over here, you can see that my heading is left because I've got the wind coming from left. So I'm pointing ever so slightly into wind, but I'm tracking 061, which is downwind. And that heading will be whatever the opposite heading is for your runway. So let's get ourselves back down to 1600 feet and get ready to start the timer. If I look outside, there's the airport. Fantastic scenery. I'm really impressed with the, the Orbex. Although we'll see what the new flight simulator brings in terms of uh, scenery. Now I'm crossing my blue line, start the timer. This time we haven't got a tailwind. So because we're not being pushed downwind as fast, what I'm going to have to do is do the full 45 seconds. I've only got maybe one knot tailwind if that, so roughly 45 seconds. So we'll see how this one works out. So you have to adjust these things depending on what weather you're using. Beautiful scenery here in Edinburgh. Two, one, turn. So start the turn, flaps to two. 20 degrees of bank and I'm turning into a wind now so actually 20 degrees may be too much we shall see just because that wind is actually pushing us away from the center line gear down keeping it level keeping it level once again about 160 knots now starting our descent 500 feet per minute ish oh that's a bit much I know 600 is about three degrees on final approach but there we go we've also got this green bug here but it sometimes gives false information so we're descending a bit fast right let's get looking out the window there's the runway flaps to three shadow off that turn because i can see that the wind is pushing me through slightly and flaps to full run the landing checklist of course and we're going to do the same again so once I'm three miles from the runway how can I see that well I've got hit up here 3.3 to the threshold at three miles I want to be a thousand feet above which would be 1100 feet so I don't want to be any lower than I am now so I'm just going to shadow off that rate of descent there's a runway two whites two reds we're fully configured stabilized for the landing going to keep about 600 feet per minute for now ground speed slightly faster this time 125 knots so 6 to 700 feet per minute and there you go so hopefully you guys can uh, use this for your own um, training have a go at flying these circuits in x-plane 
gets you used to handling the airbus handling the fly-by-wire downwind if you need any help on what's going on with the trimming and so on i've got videos on normal law which explain that on my channel as well uh, but hopefully this would be just a way for you to practice takeoffs and landings without having to constantly reset uh, the, the simulator so let's go and have one more landing So that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been useful for you. As always, not for any real world use, but uh, hopefully bring you some extra fun in X-Plane 11. Of course, there will be more videos to come. I'm sorry it's taken so long to get uh, this video made. Uh, it's been a little bit busier, but I've now swapped to a different computer. So hopefully we can have some smoother live streams and of course be ready for that new uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Although I must say the Edinburgh scenery here by Orbex has been uh, really amazing. I, I do really like it. Um, but uh, if we can have that around the whole planet, that's going to be uh, fantastic too. Of course, any questions, please put them into the chat. There's also our Discord. You can join the invite is in the uh, description for this video. Otherwise, keep uh, safe and well, and we'll see you again in another video soon. Thank you very much for watching.